By the moment of the passage of his Nazi health bill in Congress, Barack Obama had made himself easily the most hated among elected officials in the United States. Our population, which had situated itself in stark opposition to what this bill represented, a denial of the right to life, despise Obama for what he has done to them. A new phase of the mass strike has developed, where more than ever, patriotic instincts are burgeoning, that what Obama represents, and what the Congress as co-criminals represents, is a threat to their very existence. But Lynn and LaRouche recently warned that what the Nero-sized ego now has to fear is not the much-justified hatred of his own constituents. He has to fear that he has become a disposable asset to his controllers in London, more useful dead as a martyr than alive. LaRouche warned on March 25th that within the wave of justified outrage against President Barack Obama's British-sponsored Nazi health bill, the British themselves are using their assets to target the president for assassination. He said the British criminal operation must be identified and stopped. The clearest example which shows that a violent British-sponsored operation is being planned against the president comes in the form of former Alabama militia member Mike Vanderbilt. Vanderbo, who calls himself an anti-government militia leader, recently claimed responsibility for the bricks thrown through the windows of congressional offices shortly after the passage of the Nazi health care bill. In the same diatribe, he said he opposes the idea of assassination, but flagged himself as an asset of the British-created Confederacy by pitting himself as a hater of Abraham Lincoln whom he accuses of having caused mass murder of Americans by waging the Civil War and doing untold damage to the U.S. Constitution. Vanderbo is just one of many assets the British are currently playing. So let's take a closer look at Vanderbo's pedigree and see how the British use their witless dupes as instigators and as covers in their operations, including their operations to kill U.S. presidents. From the top, Vanderbilt's entire career was made by the infamous British anti-U.S. operative Ambrose Evans Pritchard. While living in the U.S. in the mid-1990s, Evans Pritchard set up an entire web of paramilitary groups tied into British intelligence and into corrupted U.S. military elements. The British created these sorts of militia groups, composed of various cells that operate with limited knowledge about their controllers, as assets to be used in operations against the United States. The Christian militia arrested earlier this week was one of those assets. It was exactly one of these explicitly Amer anti-American groupings called the Constitutional Militia and created by Pritchard and his asset John Rowland in 1994, where Mike Vanderbilt got his start, as they subsequently made Vanderbilt a leader of this grouping. Rowland and Vanderbilt operated in this faculty as outright agents deluding populists in the militia grouping to anti-U.S. government views, specifically directed against then-President Bill Clinton. At that time, the British were fomenting an anti-Clinton environment and later ran a well-known operation against the United States. Several days before the April 19, 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, Roland forwarded to militia participants a report put out by Lord William Rees Mogg of the London Times, that the Clinton administration would begin oppressing militia people and would carry out a big terror bombing and blame it on the militias. Roland turned out an anti-government rally on this basis before the bombing occurred. The bombing, which Rees Mogg had apparently known of, occurred several days later. Subsequent to the bombing, Vanderbilt became part of the British propaganda cover-up, controlling public perception by blaming the Clinton government and vague neo-Nazi groupings for the attack. Evans Pritchard himself, in his 1997 book, The Secret Life of Bill Clinton, brags how his operative Vanderbilt has been brought into the public eye in the wake of the bombing. He extols the emergence of Vanderbilt's John Doe Cyber Journal as a new source of information about the attack. He also cites Vanderbilt's role in the militia, but doesn't mention it's a militia of his own creation. If there is yet any doubt of the controlling role of British asset Evans Pritchard, Roland himself has subsequently told EIR News Service that Evans Pritchard had put him in touch with intelligence agents from around the world, and they had together set up various agents in charge of militia groupings in the Midwest and Texas. 
It is clear that Vanderbilt's operation of anti-government militias, which is now moving for an armed march against the government on the Potomac on April 19th, the anniversary of the Oklahoma bombing, is a foreign operation and must be stopped. But what is also clear is that Vanderbilt is only one of the many British operations being put into place. An environment is being created for an attempt at assassination. No lone gunman or lone group ever killed anyone. LaRouche continued his warning that the biggest danger to President Obama is his own ego. Obama needs to cut out his bravado right now because his Nero tendency to want to flaunt whatever he thinks he's got is the quality of mind any sophisticated controllers of an assassination attempt will be banking on. What Obama's controllers already know about is his weak-minded ego trip. Otherwise, they wouldn't be running a serious assassination threat. Were Obama to continue putting himself in the line of fire by showing up at town hall meetings to brag about his Nazi bill, he would be falling into the hands of people who want him dead. As LaRouche said, he is simply making himself and the United States vulnerable to his assassination. If he wants to survive, he should restrict his activity and keep himself safe. The president should be kept safe and removed quietly from office by peaceful constitutional means, as LaRouche advised in his recent March 13th webcast. That is the only safe pathway for the country and the president. We've seen the environmental threat represented by Vanderbilt and his crazy militia circles. We also saw the so-called Christian militia arrested earlier this week. Real patriots do not support the assassination of their president. It is the operatives of our enemies who would participate in a British-run operation against the president, which may result in the disintegration of the nation. On March 30th, LaRouche updated his warning, deposing that we are in an environment like that before JFK's assassination. That, as in the run-up to Kennedy's assassination, it wasn't a lone gunman who prepared himself, but an entire atmosphere was created by enemies of the Republic, including through British-sponsored propaganda against the president. Once assets of the British Empire had decided to eliminate Kennedy, a propaganda cover was set, where various groupings, including the team which actually ran the assassination, were riled up through British publication against the president's so-called betrayal. These groupings were stationed to provide cover for any higher sources of the assassination. So the threat already existed from several directions. And in the disregard for necessary safety measures, Kennedy was exposed and was killed. A similar environment of terror is now being created, as we already pointed out just one of these examples where many threats will not present themselves. And while most of these threats will amount to nothing, what they really are is a flanking maneuver to create a cover for what will be a real operation. They are creating multiple places to deflect the blame once an attempt occurs. The assassination of the president is utterly condemnable and must be stopped. To do so, LaRouche said we must assume that the threat is everywhere. Keep on the alert and don't let your guard down even if one or another of these terrorist groupings has been removed. As LaRouche has said, Obama has, in effect, set himself up by ramming through the Nazi health bill and making himself the most undesirable official in the country. He has now become a liability for the British who run him, and they will use racism and every other tool at their command to personally target him. Obama must be removed, but he must be removed peacefully through impeachment or forced resignation. That is the way Americans deal with a president who has crossed the line. An assassination would be merely a resurfacing of the option the British have always held, to make their disposable fool a martyr as a means of ripping apart and destroying the United States. This is indeed the ultimate objective of the British Empire. So circulate this video statement and LaRouche's written warnings of this assassination threat widely. Make public this warning, and by doing so, dissuade any agents of the British Empire from participating in this evil scheme.